Good morning, everyone. Uh, hello and welcome to the weekly mentoring. Uh, thank you for joining in. I hope you all are doing well. Good morning. A very good morning. Good afternoon, wherever you're joining us from. Good to see you. Good morning to. Good morning, Kennedy. Good morning. Thank you. Good to see you, Daniel, Nickel. Everyone, thanks for joining in. Right. Uh, very quickly, can I request uh, one of our students to uh, start us off with a word of prayer, please? Right. Uh, Daniel, can I request you to start us off with a word of prayer, if that's okay? Heavenly Father, we just wish to thank you for this day and hour of mentoring. May your Holy Spirit minister to us, Father, as we participate in today's session. Please bless all our teachers and our fellow students here. And may we continue to grow in the knowledge of your word to become better stewards of the gospel. In, in Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, today we have Pastor Paul, uh, who will be sharing with us briefly on, on the topic of evangelism. So uh, over to Pastor Paul. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Roshan. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this time of mentoring hour. All right. So the topic uh, that... I'll be sharing on is uh, evangelism. Uh, let me just take a moment to uh, present. Uh, and and so every time we talk about evangelism, you know, some of us may feel this way. Oh no, uh, not evangelism. Uh, it's not my calling, or it's not something that I am comfortable doing. And uh, we may have many different inhibitions that stop us from uh, you know, really ministering and reaching out to people. Uh, but really, uh, the ministry, the heart of the gospel uh, is to reach out, uh, to bring people into God's kingdom. And uh, before we go ahead, uh, just want to share a little bit of statistics. Uh, it's not the recent one, but just uh, global statistics on what on the different religions, world religions that we see. And uh, from this map, we see that, you know, there's the maximum, there's 35.5% of Christians. Uh, I know this is not the updated one, uh, and we know that it's just growing. And uh, uh, so, you know, in our world where we have about 8 billion people, uh, about 2.3 billion people, um, uh, adhere to Jesus Christ, they believe are Christians. Uh, so if we look at it, uh, it's still like we are a drop uh, in the ocean. And Matthew chapter 28, 19 and 20, uh, the Lord Jesus gives us this beautiful, powerful commission before he left, uh, before he resurrected to heaven. He said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So the Lord Jesus has given us this commission and he has said, go and make disciples of all nations. And so how can you and I be part of this commission? commission that God has given us to uh, reach out to minister to people. So let's just look at a few points. I'll just share a few thoughts and then uh, we leave it open for questions and discussions. All right, so what is the heart of evangelism and why is it so important? Uh, uh, just a little disclaimer that I want to uh, place here is that, you know, not all of us uh, you know, some of us may feel, hey, I'm not an evangelist, or I'm, I'm just a worship leader, or I'm working in the marketplace, I've got my own business, or, uh, you know, uh, or I'm not called to 
uh, really be in full-time ministry. Uh, uh, and so I want to just encourage us that it doesn't really matter where we are. We could be in any sphere of influence, uh, but we can do the work of the evangelist, that is to, you know, to reach out, spread the gospel, minister to people, and uh, spread the love of Christ wherever we are. So uh, I know sometimes you may feel, hey, it's not my responsibility. Maybe God has chosen somebody else, the pastors, the evangelists to do. But uh, really, God is saying he's, the commission is for all of us uh, to go and make disciples. So with that, uh, uh, we know that you know, uh, when we begin to reach out, when we begin to evangelize, it, it is not only a natural effort, but it is a spiritual battle. Uh, we know that Paul says, uh, he says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but uh, we wrestle against principalities, powers, darkness. And so the real battle for souls is a spiritual battle. Right. Of course, there are other practical aspects that we have to uh, learn and develop and uh, build ourselves even as we learn to evangelize. But the real battle is a spiritual battle. So uh, I just put down uh, uh, you know, an acronym for the word battle. Uh, uh, this is not the only points. right? Uh, it's just a few of my thoughts. You can feel free to add to it. Now, there's so much more that we can learn, but just a few, uh, just a few of my thoughts that I've put in here. First one is when you and I uh, decide that we, we, you know, step out to evangelize. Uh, first point is we must believe, right? we must be really convicted of who Jesus is, and, uh, that He is who He says He is. And uh, so that deep conviction, that belief in our heart, and only if we believe will we be able to go out and stand on that truth, right? Because uh, when we look around us, there's you know there's so much people say hey, Jesus is just a prophet, a good man, uh, a good teacher, uh, but when we believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Uh, we know it, we believe it, uh, we will be able to freely and boldly uh, minister to people. John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except by me. Right. So believe in what you're doing, even as we get opportunities to evangelize one-on-one, -on -one, college, our workplaces, believe in what you're doing. Right? believe in what we're doing. Uh, two is uh, to be all in, right? That is uh, to be willing to do whatever God asks us to do. Right? So sometimes, uh, you know, he may ask us to step out of our comfort zone. So as I was sharing, uh, you know, many of us may feel, hey, this is not what I want to do. And this is not my comfort zone. Uh, just give me a stage and a mic and I'm, I'm I know I'm good at preaching or good at leading worship. Uh, that's wonderful, uh, but uh, we must be willing to step out of our comfort zone. There will be times God will uh, bring people into our life. God will bring opportunities uh, and open doors for us to really minister and speak into people's lives. And, uh, uh, and so we must be all in. We must be willing to do it. Um, Matthew eleven twenty four. Even as we are all in, as we're believing and trusting God, Matthew eleven twenty four says, "Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you receive it, and it'll be yours." Right. So, uh, I'm also reminded of Acts one eight, where uh, Jesus says uh, to those, uh, He said in Acts one eight, He says, uh, "You will receive power to be a witness." Right. And basically, the Greek word there is martyr. So uh, he's saying you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be even a martyr, which means to go all in uh, to the point of uh, giving your life for Christ. Right. Uh, the next word is T, which is to trust. Right. Uh, trust is to be 
willing to trust in God in everything that we do. Right? Uh, without trust, it leaves place for confusion, leaves place for doubt. Right? Uh, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, it's not on this, but it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Uh, in all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. So, uh, so does it mean like, you know, when we are trusting God that we know everything from the scriptures or we know everything from the Bible, do we have all the answers? Uh, the answer is no. But we know that along the way, uh, the Lord Jesus will, you know, continue to teach us, continue to, uh, you know, reveal things to us. And uh, you know, if you look at when the Lord Jesus was doing his ministry, earthly ministry, uh, when the disciples, uh, when he chose the disciples, decide, the disciples had no idea what, what was going to happen in the future. Like they didn't uh, realize uh, what, what is going to happen, but uh, they had to trust God. They had to trust in who Jesus was and who he was and what he said he will do. Uh, so even as you and I you know, uh, get opportunities to evangelize, to uh, to minister to people. We we trust in God. We know that you know God will, uh, you know, speak. God will minister, right? Uh, right. And the next word is truth. Uh, and Ephesians four fifteen says, "Speak the truth in love." Uh, sorry, I missed that uh, slide. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, uh, but the next word is truth. Uh, Speaking the truth in love, right? John 8, 32 says, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free, right? Uh, and when you and I are ministering to people, when we get opportunities to evangelize, to spread the gospel, wherever we are, it could be one-on-one -on -one setting, it could be uh, in front of many people, uh, one of the aspects that, you know, a powerful tool that we can use is the word of God, to speak the word of God, to let the word of God minister to people, to bring correction, to bring exhortation, to uh, to rebuke, to build up, to encourage. Right? And we know that the word is powerful. The word is uh, like a hammer that can break a hard heart. So, uh, uh, you know, one of the things that I, that I, uh, you know, I've learned over time is, you know, sometimes we try to, uh, you know, really force people to become believers, right? We try to just enforce all our thoughts, everything that we know, uh, and we try to make them understand. And, uh, uh, you know, sometimes it, it just doesn't work out. But, you know, when we trust in God's word, maybe just a word, a scripture, sharing a scripture to them is is so much more powerful and you know than things that we may have said the word of god trust in the truth of the word of god let the word of god minister to people right now. and the next word is love you know when the lord jesus did his earthly ministry everything that he did was undergirded with love, everything that he did. He didn't, all the miracles, all the healings, all that he did uh, was because he loved. And there are plenty of scriptures uh, in the Bible when we see that uh, God ministered in love, the Lord Jesus ministered in love and compassion. Matthew 14, 14 says, and when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude and he was moved with compassion for them and heal their sickness right uh, sometimes you know while we're you know ministering to people uh, we can come across as brash we can come across as harsh demanding uh, or even sometimes judgmental hey you know this is what it is this is you know, this is the true god and the one that you are worshiping is not true and uh, we can sound brash we can sound demanding and judgmental, but but what will happen is this can only this will only cause fear. It can cause resentment. 
uh, to the person that we are speaking to. So uh, we must be willing to love them. First love them and then minister to them. And God pours out his love in our hearts where, uh, you know, we begin to love them, care for them. Right? Uh, uh, people may not believe immediately. But even as we share the gospel, people may not believe immediately. Uh, now, we need to continue with the spirit of love, be patient with them. Uh, there, are, uh, there are situations and uh, where we have to give people time for them to understand. You know, uh, sometimes people just get it, they receive the gospel, they believe it, they're in it. And, uh, you know, that's wonderful and it's beautiful to see it that way. But there are times when God takes people through seasons and we need to be patient. We need to help them understand. Uh, and that can, that for that, we need to be uh, guided by love. And just the last one here, E, is... Uh, eternal reward uh, even as we minister to people uh, there's a reward god rewards us right uh, first corinthians 15 and 58 says let nothing move you always give yourself fully to the work of the lord because you know that your labor in the lord is not in vain now, First Thessalonians 2, 19 and 20, for what is our hope, our joy, our crown of rejoicing? It is not even you, is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? Right? So there is an eternal reward. Even as we minister to people, it could be one-on-one -on -one and nobody even knows it. Uh, there is a reward for us. Uh, just quickly, just take another two minutes. I uh, just want to share uh, six ways uh, and of course, there are plenty of methods. Uh, last week, we looked at uh, media and technology. Pastor shared with us and how media and technology is impacting uh, the church globally. Uh, so I've just put down six ways. These are not the only six methods. There are plenty of other methods, but just six ways. First one is being direct, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, uh, ministering one-on-one -on -one to friends, family. Uh, two is an apologetic approach. Uh, where you know, there, Peter says in First Peter three fifteen, he says, "Be ready to give an apology." It is be ready to give a defense for the gospel. Now, this can be on a one on one setting or even in a bigger setting. Uh, and then is the testimonial approach: how God has blessed you, how God has provided, He has healed, how your life was before you met Christ, and how uh, how your life has changed after uh, Christ. Uh, and after you have believed in Jesus. And then there's the relational uh, way where we build relationships with people, build their trust, uh, build relationships, and then uh, take, this is a slower process, but over time you can lead them to Christ. And then is the invitational, uh, and I think many of us have, uh, you know, we we like to do this, and it's it's good where we can invite people to church, church events, life groups, um, youth meetings, and and so this way they can come and experience, and it gives them an opportunity uh, for you know to experience uh, and, and to see what God can do in their lives. And finally, is uh, life based, uh, uh, meaning just letting our life speak. Um, uh, you know, we, we know that you know, we can preach a lot, we can teach a lot, uh, and not everyone may remember everything that we preach and teach, but uh, you know, people usually remember the life that we that we have lived. So, uh, uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 says, Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. Uh, and so, these are just six ways I put down direct, apologetic, testimonial, relational, invitational, and life-based, and there's many more. Uh, so uh, let us you know, go ahead and uh, you know, really begin to evangelize, reach out. Uh, so I'll just uh, leave this time open uh, for questions. The questions could be based on the topic that we have just discussed, 
or the questions could also be anything pertaining to life and ministry and uh, uh, our faculty as well as here. Uh, we'll do our best to answer those questions. Yes, leave this time open. Uh, feel free to post your questions. You can also unmute, ask your questions. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, any question? It need not be about evangelism only. So you can ask any question about life, about ministry, about anything that you're learning. If you want to share your thoughts on the courses that you're studying as well, uh, feel free to do that. Praise the Lord, Pastor. Can I uh, say something? I want to give a testimony. After I joined this uh, APC college and learning about the Holy Spirit, evangelism, praise and worship, and I started praying in the spirit and God has blessed me. You know, my neighbor, she was uh, leaving to Dubai. She's Catholic and she was leaving to Dubai on uh, last week. And uh, she had uh, suddenly felt a pain in her leg and she couldn't walk. So I told her, can I help you? So she said, uh, no, I'm okay. I brought some ointment and I have, uh, I, I'll be okay. Then the Holy Spirit led me to pray for her, you know. So it was, I was restless and I just took one ointment and I said, I have this ointment and you will feel better. And I hope if I pray, you won't mind. She said, no, it's okay. And I prayed for her and in the name of Jesus, blood of Jesus for healing. I put that ointment and when she was leaving at 12 o'clock, I asked how you feel. She says, I'm that pain is gone. Everything has left me. Uh, so I give all the praise and glory to Jesus. You know, I told her, I pray for you in Jesus name. And then uh, this has also led me to pray for people who uh, the Holy Spirit is showing me, whom I have not kept in touch, you know. So I take uh, time to call them and pray for them. And I'm really so grateful. And it, these classes have helped me so much. And I thank Pastor and all the faculty of APC College. And I give all the glory to Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gertrude, for sharing. Uh, thank you. God bless. All right. Kennedy says, can you talk about political and legislative challenges towards evangelism in our day-to-day -day activities? Yes. Um, so uh, I'll just share my thought and I'll leave it open for the other faculty also to uh, get their inputs. Uh, so Kennedy, yes, um, if you look at uh, our nation and of course, even globally, there are a lot of uh, restrictions um, in, in terms of sharing the gospel. Uh, um, and yes, God has, uh, you know, God has given us the spirit of, you know, and he has uh, given us the commission to go. But God has also given us wisdom, right? He expects us to walk in wisdom, to be wise in the way we uh, live our life. So, so if with, you know, in, there are certain places. So let me just take a context of uh, our nation because that's some of the places that I know of. Uh, there are places in North India where, uh, you know, there's intense persecution. They're not allowed to evangelize. Uh, so in places uh, like this, um, you know, God knows that, you know, we cannot like, go out and have these big evangelistic meetings. Uh, but we got to be wise in the sense where you say, okay, we, we need to obey the law may not be something that we may agree to, but since it's the law, as children of God, we must obey the law. Uh, but we don't we we don't stop evangelizing in the sense that we you know we can reach out in in one-on-one in, -on -one in a smaller way, uh, in, in smaller groups and uh, you know really like minister to people in smaller settings, right? Uh, so there are going to be challenges. Uh, there are going to be, uh, you know, uh, restrictions in sharing the gospel. But uh, uh, the Lord Jesus has commissioned us. He said we have to do it. 
but then we can be wise in the way we uh, minister. I don't know. If, I hope I've uh, brought some light to your question. Uh, I'd leave it open for the other faculty to share. Masters, please go ahead. If you'd like to share your thoughts. Master Ashish, would you like to share a thought on this? Uh, yeah, Paul, uh, even as just, you know, and I agree with what you've said, we just need to uh, be wise. Uh, we, you know, we shouldn't, uh, so so there is the whole thing of, of uh, you know, we want to follow the rules, uh, which we must uh, respectfully. Uh, and yet at the same time, you know, uh, we need to obey the Lord's command, which is to continue to share the gospel. So uh, going about it in a wise way, and I think there's, there are always, uh, you know, God can give us ideas and means and methods to continue to propagate the gospel in spite of the political or legislative challenges that are there. Uh, so we have to be wise and we have to be courageous also. Uh, and, and we see examples of it right in the, in, you know, in the book of Acts, uh, starting from chapter 3. Uh, they, they faced opposition in those days, uh, primarily from the Jewish people, uh, but they continued proclaiming the gospel. They didn't hold back, uh, they just went out all. So we need to do that. Follow the rules, uh, and not every rule is a persecution. Sometimes the rule is for the sake of you know maintaining civil order. Uh, and it applies to people of all religions. It's not just targeted towards Christians. Uh, and uh, sometimes it is targeted towards the Christian faith. Uh, so we need to discern what is which. And then, uh, you know, like Jesus said, when he, when he sent his disciples, he said, I'm sending you as uh, sheep among wolves, uh, be wise as serp serpents and harmless as doves. So uh, we need to continue to do that. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. We have another question from Rose. Um, was there a time where you stepped out boldly to evangelize when there was opposition? Uh, yes, I'll just share one couple of instances, but I'll just share one uh, and then I'll leave it open again to the faculty. Uh, I remember this one time we were in uh, Mangalore, and at that time the church was just about 10 of us, and Mangalore was known. Or to be a place where there was not much of outreach. So, so we were there and we were just looking up what are the options that we have. And uh, remember this, uh, in Bangalore, what we used to do was we used to go, during Christmas, we used to go to malls, uh, apartment complexes and have Christmas carols, share a small word uh, about, the, uh, about the Christmas message. And I remember we went to Mangalore, we went to a couple of malls, uh, got permissions, and they said, okay, you can come do your carols and, uh, you know, place your book. We had also got permission to place your book tables and uh, share a gospel message. Now, it, uh, nobody in, Bang in Mangalore had, uh, you know, really opened up to it. So it was probably the first time that a church was doing it. So uh, what happened was we went to the police station, we got letters saying that, got permission saying that this is a church and this is what we're doing. And uh, we have got permission from the mall. So we had all of those letters, but uh, on the day of uh, uh, the carols, we, you know, a group of people came and they said, you have to stop this. You cannot, uh, uh, you know, they took some of the books and they started throwing it all over the place in the mall. Uh, 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 but then, uh, you know, we had the papers. And so, uh, so they said, we won't stop it. Uh, we will continue. Uh, of course, they, they were like, you know, you have to stop it. You cannot do this. But then I have, since we had permission from everyone, from the police to the mall authorities, the malls themselves gave us their speakers and all the equipment to do this. So, uh, so no, we didn't stop. We did the malls in all, uh, we did the candles in all the malls. So we didn't stop. So yes, there were times uh, uh, there were oppositions, but uh, when we go about doing yeah, and doing it in the right way. I was just wondering if I didn't, if we didn't have the police letter, uh, uh, I think we would have been in trouble. But uh, 
we thank God for the wisdom, right? So we had the letter, so we showed it to them. They tried to you know, cause trouble, but they couldn't do much after that. So we were able to uh, do carols in all the modes. In, in that yes, and leave it open to any other, any of our faculty uh, you'd like to share. Let's go ahead, Anusha. Sir, I have a question. I have a So when we need to take permission for the evangelism, we share the word in public. OK, Anusha, your voice was breaking. But if I heard you right, you said, do we have to take permission to share the word? Uh, is this, uh, I, I got that much, but are you talking? In public. So you're talking about street, okay, in public, okay. Um, so, so it really depends on uh, where we are, or so. So, in a place like uh, uh, Bangalore, like urban settings, um, you know, it would be. Uh, I, I I don't know about street evangelism uh, because uh, now with the bills that have come up, uh, the anti-conversion bill has come into most of. Uh, the states in our nation. Uh, uh, so regarding permission for that, again, uh, uh, I'm not really sure if we can go to... Yes, Pastor, please go ahead. Yeah, sorry, uh, Anusha, I didn't hear your question correctly. Uh, are you saying, do we need to take permission? Uh, or what was your question, Anusha? Yes, Pastor, do we need to take permission uh, for spreading Gospel in the streets and publicly are do evangelism. Yeah, so so here's here's how we need to look at it, right? Um, so we are, uh, you know, for example, uh, different countries have different rules, and even within countries, different states have different rules. So if you look at India as a nation, we are a secular nation, so legally. All of us have the freedom to practice and propagate our faith. Everybody, every person, every religion has the freedom to do that. However, we are there are also what are not, you know, our public spaces. That means the street, or you go to a mall or the footpath, right? That's a public space. Meaning, it's not my private. I don't own it. It's not my private space. It's a government-owned space, right? And it's equally accessible to other people. So uh, everybody has access to that space. But if I'm standing there and if I'm, let's say, preaching, uh, I need to be mindful of how what I am doing is impacting the freedom and impacting other people. You know, I can't say uh, I am, I'm exercising my constitutional right to preach the gospel, which is correct. The constitution gives me the right to preach the gospel, but I am doing it on not my private space, that is not in my house, but I'm doing it in a public space. The moment I step into a public space, then you know my freedom ends where the, the freedom of the other person begins, right? Or my freedom ends where if there is a rule that prohibits that, then that's where my freedom ends, right? So I need to be respectful of that. So, for, or I can't go into somebody else's place. For example, I can't go into a mall and just, you know, take a megaphone and start preaching because the mall is not my private space. The mall is neither a public space. The mall is it's owned by somebody. Right? It could be owned by you know some company or somebody. So I can't go into the mall and just take a megaphone and start preaching. Right? I am actually violating somebody else's space. So these are simple things that we need to think about. Now, the Constitution gives us the right to practice and propagate our faith, but implicit in that is you need to walk respectfully of the law, you need to walk respectfully of public spaces, and you need to walk respectfully of other people's private spaces. Right? That means it belongs to them. I can't just go there and preach. Right? So if I'm using a public space, then you know we need to go and get permission you know, uh, that's where because i'm not using my space i'm using a public space and that's where we go to the police station especially if you're doing something like you're putting up a stall 
or anything that may obstruct the freedom of the movement of people, right? Then I need to go and get, we need to go get permission and say, hey, can we do this? Can we, you know, can we put up a stop or can we, um, uh, you know, give out handles or so? So the thing is, while the constitution gives us freedom, we need to be good citizens. So that's when, you know, permission comes in. And there are rules. For example, if you want to rent a, you know, a, a open ground to have a meeting, you have to go and get permission from the police station, etc. You can't just rent it and do your own thing. You know, so there are rules that we must follow. Uh, if you want to go inside a mall, the mall means it's somebody else's space. So we, we have to go and get permission. And uh, yeah, like as Pastor Paul was sharing, over the years we've done in a number of things. For example, our youth ministry actually started in uh, in in Coffee Day. So I'm going back in, in, in time to 2000, I think it was 2002 uh, or 2000, yeah, I think it's 2002. Uh, in those days, there was a co Coffee Day on uh, Brigade Road. Uh, and then we moved to MG Road. So we just didn't go into the coffee and start preaching or start distributing tracts. That would be a violation of their private space, right? So what we did, we went and we spoke to the coffee person and we said, hey, you know, we can we need permission to use your space for two hours, but we are going to be singing Christian songs. We're going to be, you know, uh, sharing the gospel. Is it okay? But we are guaranteeing you that we will buy, you know, 30 snacks, 30 beverages and 30 snacks. They happily gave it to us. So that means we got permission from the people who own that private space. But then we preached the gospel and the youth ministry just flourished. And, you know, uh, in those days, we uh, the biggest coffee day at that time was on Cunningham Road. And we saw more than 100 youth come on a Saturday in the coffee day and we were, we were preaching the gospel. And then when we couldn't hold any more people, we moved to, you know, an auditorium. So, so the, the point was, we did it with permission. So the constitution gives us a right to preach the gospel. But if you're using somebody's, you know, either a public space or a private space, you need to get permission from, uh, you know, those particular people, then we do it. And then that's perfectly fine. So I think it's just being a good citizen. I hope that helps uh, guide us, guide our thinking. Thanks. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Anusha. Thank you. Right, we have a question here from Ritu Jao. Um, I've shared the gospel to someone. They accepted Jesus, so I made that person pray the salvation prayer. And later, it turns out that that person is also worshipping their God. So how can we deal with these type of situations? I'll I, I just share a quick thought, and I'll leave it open. Uh, Ananda, I see your hand raised. I'll just come to you in a moment. Uh, so yes. Um, uh, we've been studying in uh, in identity. We we see that you know our spirit is new. Uh, when we become believers, uh, we get a new spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit is in us. We are uh, old. The old has passed away. We are new. But Romans chapter twelve, uh, Paul says, uh, "Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind." So what happens is, in our spirit, we are. We believe in Jesus, we are new in our spirit, but our thinking is still conformed to the old ways. So Paul is saying, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So it is, uh, yes, it is, yeah, right? we have people who, because they've been doing this for years, right? For, or maybe for a long time, it's a habit. Uh, so what we can do is can, uh, not get upset or angry with them, uh, saying, how can you do this when you already uh, the salvation prayer but to again help them and guide them to understand uh, uh i just want to say this one thing and i leave it open uh, light is greater than darkness so uh, even if they're you know going back there and, and the more uh, the light of god's word the light of uh, the gospel and the light of who jesus is uh, is uh, you know is revealed into them and into their heart darkness will just be dispelled right so uh, I'll leave it open. Uh, maybe Pastor Seri now, Pastor Roshan, if you'd like to add on this. Uh, 
Thank you, Pastor Paul. Uh, thank you, Rutuja, for your question. Uh, you know, just we need to understand that, you know, uh, people's spiritual journey uh, can be complex and can take time for some people. Uh, it's also, we can, we just need to know that sometimes when people have accepted Jesus, it doesn't mean that they are just going to immediately abandon all their previous beliefs and practices uh, because, you know, uh, there is essential to also understand that uh, faith development takes you know time it's a process so what we need to do is uh, be non-judgmental uh, have a non-judgmental conversation with them uh, try to understand uh, what are their beliefs their practices um, and also understand you know their motivations and the struggles that they may be facing why they're doing what they're doing um, maybe sometimes some people think that, you know, uh, all gods are one, just like we pray to uh, Jesus and praying to someone, uh, to other gods and goddesses as well. So we need to understand their motivations, what struggles they are facing, and also just offer guidance and support uh, and, you know, don't criticize. Um, uh, encourage them to study the word of God, encourage them to attend a church service or, you know, a life group or fellowship of believers, uh, which will help them just deepen their uh, understanding of their faith in God. Also, prayer is always a powerful tool, uh, just helping somebody on their faith journey. So just pray for their uh, spiritual growth, uh, you know, also continue to maintain your friendship with them, uh, and, you know, live out your faith uh, uh, consistently before them so that, you know, it can have a good significant impact uh, in their lives. And also know that, you know, um, um, that uh, in, in different people's uh, personal journey, uh, their spiritual journey of their faith walk with God, uh, you know, uh, it takes time and, you know, it happens in their own way. And, uh, you know, just trust that God will work in their lives, even if you don't see immediate changes, just believe, just have faith, uh, just continue to pray for them, just speak into their lives, just encourage them, motivate them, teach them from God's word. And I think, you know, then they will be able to see the difference. They'll be able to uh, also, uh, you know, share your life testimony, your encounter with God, uh, get them to put their faith and trust in believing only in Jesus and how Jesus is different from the others, uh, other so-called gods and uh, goddesses. And I think that will just help them uh, and motivate them in their faith walk and their journey with the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope that helps. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Selena. Uh, Sri Radha, I hope uh, those points helped you. Uh, Anand, I... Sorry, I, Pastor Emmanuel. Uh, yes, go ahead. Well, Emmanuel, sorry, that was Ruti, Rutuja's question. Oh, sorry, yes, yeah. Rutuja's question, yes, okay. All right, uh, Sri Radha, we'll just come to your question in a moment. Anand, uh, you raised your hands. Uh, would you like to share a question? Yes, go ahead, Anand. Anand, uh, we can't hear you. Oh. Okay, uh, we we'll come back to Anand. Uh, Anand, uh, you may need to check your mic. Uh, just make sure the audio is fine. Uh, Sri Radha says, sometimes we share the gospel with some people who start their journey with the Lord with so much passion, but afterwards they walk away from the truth. Uh, do we need to follow up again and again? Uh, and if they start to neglect us and avoid coming to the church, then what steps do we need to take towards those people? Wonderful question. All right. So um, now I'll just share quickly a small thought and I'll again leave it open. Uh, yes, there will be times when uh, people are begin with you know great fervor and passion, uh, but over time, it, you know, they do turn away or maybe they just become lukewarm. Uh, it, it would be a good thing to follow up to help them, uh, uh, to you know, encourage them in the Lord. Uh, uh, if you are in a place where you are in touch with that person, yes, definitely reach out to them, uh, you know, be there for them, disciple them, help them, uh, you know, uh, get back on their feet, get back. Because uh, sometimes, you know, we may feel uh, like it's just a monotonous thing, you know, routine that we are following. Uh, um, so yes, uh, if you are in a position to 
you know, probably meet or, or have a continual communication with that person, yes, uh, follow up with them again and again, get them up. Uh, uh, and if they start, if, if they start to neglect us, uh, and, right, so one thing in evangelism is, uh, you know, we cannot control other people's emotions and thoughts. So uh, our part is to share the gospel. Our part is to encourage people. And uh, we really can't control people's thoughts and, uh, and their reactions to what we say. So if they neglect us, avoid coming to church, uh, we don't have to force them, but we can always pray for them, ask God to, uh, you know, minister to them. And we can also ask them, what is the reason as to why you don't want to come? Did, you know, many a times people don't want to come to church because maybe something has happened in their life, or they're praying for something, they haven't received answers, or in the church, some, somebody must have spoken something which has hurt them. So get to know the reason as to why they don't want to come to church. Uh, and then you can help them. But if they keep neglecting, or uh, detecting us, avoiding, can just uh, move on. Uh, but again, you can pray, keep praying for them. Uh, we have a few minutes. Uh, Rose says, what about if you want to evangelize to people in North Korea? Okay. Uh, uh, I was just uh, looking at, uh, on Google, I just went in, the, I just checked North Korea. North Korea is mostly atheist and agnostic with 2% uh, of uh, Christianity. Uh, now, uh, uh, if, if God is calling somebody to go to North Korea and start a ministry, uh, and yes, definitely, if, if you know, there's this, this uh, board here, uh, and I forget who's the person uh, who said this is one of the uh, uh, church history. Uh, it says that if God's work will never lack God's supply, so God is calling a person to North Korea to minister, to evangelize, to spread the gospel, God will, you know, God will provide for you. Uh, I, God will make a way. Uh, so, uh, you know, there's there are books, uh, there are people who have gone, uh, God smuggled to China, uh, Brother Andrew, it's a wonderful book, how he smuggled China to Bible, uh, sorry, smuggled Bibles into China uh, during the communist time. Uh, so yes, if, if God's called somebody to do it, and you know for sure that that calling is from God, uh, definitely, yes, uh, he can use people to do that. Uh, first of all, just want to add a thought. Um, yes, go ahead. Because some places like North Korea, we, we know that, you know, there are way too many restrictions and challenges yep. to minister in places like that. So um, as we've been talking about evangelism, I think one very key thing for us to do is to really pray. Uh, and that's one area where we can invest, we can, you know, uh, truly pray through till breakthrough. So that is something all of us can do. And uh, yes, as the Lord leads, um, as he gives us some innovative uh, ideas and thoughts, uh, we can, you know, uh, begin to move on that but i just wanted to emphasize prayer because it's a spiritual battle yeah thank you thank you thank you pastor nancy uh thank you so much sanjay for sharing your testimony it's wonderful to hear uh, your testimony here thank you so much for sharing your thoughts here um this pastor's mentioned about north korea radio community evangelism uh, okay lucy we have just two minutes gets through yes um uh, how do we take steps to speak to people who are from tribal groups who come to cities for their livelihood and can't read? Uh, how do we help them? Uh, would anyone like to share your thoughts on this? Um, how do we help? Uh, any of the pastors would like to share their thoughts, please? How can we? Uh, just very quickly, uh, yeah, many of them cannot read, but. Um, we, we can engage them using you know other means or audio, video, what having uh, having them watch for um, Jesus films and so on. Uh, I'm assuming that you know they're they're engaging in a language that that some others can converse in or communicate it. So uh, if they can't read, they're not literate in that sense. There are the other options of obviously communicating with them personally or using uh, the Jesus film in their language. 
uh, that's a very powerful tool, which is still continuing to impact, you know, uh, lots and lots of people. So. Thank you. Thank you, Master. Uh, uh, just the last question from Anand. Uh, uh, so Anand's question is talking about freedom of speech. If you think about permissions everywhere, even in villages, we can't reach out, right? Uh, so evangelists, right, all the evangelists also would have to take permission. So Anand, if I uh, understand your question, your question is if people are uh, evangelists in villages, uh, uh, do they have to take permissions to evangelize? Yes, go ahead. Oh, yeah. So uh, basically, uh, Anand, uh, you're talking about in the past, right? So see, things were not so restrictive in the past. For example, even in the cities in the past, back in the you know the eighties, uh, I, I remember I would freely go around, stop MG Road, <laughs> Brigade Road, distribute tracks, everything. And even when APC started, you know, the early years, uh, every Christmas we used to flood MG Road with tracks, uh, uh, and we saw our, our people, church people, we used to walk up and down MG Road, you know, one full week for, for Christmas, distributing tracts. We were singing carols on brick MG Road up and down. We should just freely walk into the malls and sing. Now, this was, I'm talking about the early 2000s. So even up until that time, both cities and villages were very open. You know, it's, uh, it, it, there was nobody, you know, really uh, attacked us. But the atmosphere has changed. Uh, people have become more sensitized. Uh, people are becoming more, you know, uh, uh, in a way more aggressive. And this is that. This, that's why we also need to adapt. We need to be smarter than, than the opposition. So things have changed, you know, uh, uh, since the early 2000s. So prior to that, we would we could just evangelize freely. Uh, but now we have to be a little bit more careful. And uh, uh, careful in the sense, you know, follow the law, look the laws. Uh, for be sensitive to both you know public and private spaces that's all okay thanks i'll hand back um, <laughs> all right all right thank you so much everyone thank you for joining this call uh see you in the classes uh have a great day have a great week ahead god bless you all thank you